today we've got another portable power station to take apart. We'll disassemble it to the best of our abilities. This is the Afery. Afer, Aferi? Afer, yeah, whatever, however you pronounce that. Afery. Uh, I'm just going to call it Afery. So this model is the Afery. Uh, it was it? Well, the 2001A. I uh, don't know what that refers to is because it doesn't really match the any of its real numbers. Well, it kind of does, I suppose. Uh, so output power for this is a uh, 4,000 watt peak, you know, your initial inrush current, and then a 2,000 watt running uh, for that. And that's it's all your... Uh, it also, surprisingly enough, it's LFP batteries. That's the lithium ferrous, um, you know, the metal, not the exploded lithium ones, the other ones, the good safe ones. The ones that last for three and a bit thousand uh, cycles. The good ones, the new modern ones everybody likes and put in everything now. They just happen to be rather heavy. Oh, let me just give you the things off the back of it. Uh, we have got, right, did I say the battery capacity is, oh, they've got it down as 1,997 watt hours. Perfect. And a battery voltage, 51.2 volts. Input charge. 1100 watt maximum. I'm, I saw more than that. I'm going to leave a picture uh, of the charge meter where it was building. Saying that 1100 watts might be the actual charge of the circuitry, but it was pulling a little bit more at the wall, so that might just be losses for the system. Uh, charge uh, input from DC solar panels or the car's 12 volts, anywhere between 11.5 and 50 volts. It can do 500 watt maximum input. A USB, it's got two normal USBs, two USB quick charges, two USB Cs, uh, the 100 watt ones. It's got a, oh, it's got a cigarette lighter and it's got an XTC and not an, I keep saying XTC, what is XTC? It's not, it's just XT, an XT60 output that gives us 25 amps on it, on it so that'll run a diesel heater, no problem. And for our plugs, we are in the UK, so that gets us three plugs on the side. Three UK plugs on the side. At least the flaps go in the right direction, it can keep the moisture off. They are not um, typical, not, the word is not, not typical. Uh, they're not the, the safety kind of UK pl plugs. These would not be uh, British, you know, safety kite approved ones, like the ones in my power meter, that they've got the shutter that covers the uh, the the live and the neutral they can only be opened once the earth pin starts to go in first and it lifts the shutters to let you plug them in this does not have that uh, this just has they're open basically, but then again, it also doesn't matter because you're not ground tied, so your risk of electrocution is very low uh, I'm sure I had other videos of people like Moaning about that, but this isn't tied to like when you're using it. If you're using it with in the damp or power tools, remember you're not. There's no it's floating ground. There's no you're not. You'd have to touch the live and neutral together to get electrocuted, which is unlikely. As I said, right there's your twelve volt cigarette plug. There's your twelve volt XC sixty twenty five amp output. There's two twelve volt. 3 amp barrel connectors, but I don't know what kind of things you plug in there, barrel connectors. USB normals, USB quick charge, and two USB Cs, and, and a light. There's also light. I don't, does the light work without it being on? No, so you still have to turn the power station on to get the light to light. I mean, it's a pretty decent light. The display is, well, it's all blue. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's a really nice display, you know. Easy to read. Um, discharge time remaining, or it would be charged if you were charging it, but I have already previously charged it. You get a time remaining, a percentage, and, and an in, in and out wattage output. And, right, first of all, let's take it apart, and then I'm going to plug it in a load, and then I'm going to load test it to see if its capacity actually matches what the capacity is in the thing. So let us turn it off. Oh, well, annoying thing is there's no... No, oh, I did it that time, good. Uh, when I tried it the first time, it was kind of nondescript, the turning off. 
Uh, I think I will reposition you to a slightly higher position and then you can see down to uh, see me undo things. Right, let's start. Well, the first bit I can see is there's screw covers covering these bits on the handle, which I think might be metal. I think these might be metal handles. Oh. Ah, a warranty void removed cap. Well, I'm going to void this warranty. And they are hex. Okay. Let's see if this makes sense. So my, I'm I'm placing a bet that this this screw here is going to be about that the this this long, about you know that long. Not a little short thing. I bet it goes right through, right to the very base. That's my bet. Oh, place your bets. Here we go. Come on. I'm fairly sure I'm right. Ah, oh, yes. Here we go, boy. Look at the length of that. Right through, top to bottom. Right. Four big bolts have been removed. What does that let us? Oh, I can feel the top's kind of loose. Something's loose. There she goes. Whoo. Well, that was easy, man. Oh, that is, they are definitely aluminium handles. It's far too uh, heavy for them to be just plastic. Nah, they're definitely aluminium. That's stiff as, you could stand on that. that. That is a heavy piece of plastic. Does it say what kind it is? It is EBS polycarbonate. Right. What are the chances of you being able to see in there where it says ABS, ABS polycarbonate right there. Lovely. I always enjoy seeing ABS polycarbonate. That gives me hope for further in here. Well, it says 220 volts on there. Oh, ooh, and it is in two halves. Okie dokie. Right, there's like cable ties holding that to that, so they might have to go so we can split it side to side. Right, I need a pair of small snips. The disassembly, while not great, it's not terrible. There are a lot of wires that need to get unplugged. And as long as I plug them back in the right places. What are the chances of me getting all these in the right places? Slim? Slim to nil? Well, we'll go try. I'm going to try. There's a lot of that um, stuff. The plastic stuff that stops uh, things coming undone. I'm just going to undo that. Oh, that's that's not... What is that? Oh, it's the reset switch. Okay, the reset switch. It's got a bit of a wibbly-wobbly connector. That's... I don't think it would pink come off. No, it's a, one of the special ones. It's got the spring clip in the middle of it. You have to press to undo, but... Still, does that not have to have the, the full current run through it? Yeah, it, it kind of does. Yeah, we'll maybe have to squash that connector a bit better and make a bit better connection. I'll show you what I mean once I'm... Yeah, because it runs on the board and the board one's loose as well. That's not... That's... That's bad. That's not bad. Well... Wait, uh, I should bring you in for a closer look at this. Right. So the first thing I've noticed, uh, right, oh, well, the very first thing I noticed was on the the reset switch, the overload protection switch. The connections, can you see? They're a bit floaty. It won't ping off, but it's not making a great electrical connection. That one's not terrible. It's like it needs to be pressed on further. And that, obviously, this wire that comes off the overload protection goes onto the board on the top. You see in there, and it's also the same level of not really being attachedness. And that could do with being a, a little bit of a tighter crimp on the spade. Actually, it's not a spade, it's the other one. Whichever one's the other way. Yeah, we're going to have to fix that. Because that appears to be rather sugarly for me. I do not like that. Right, what can I unplug though? Well, 
Well, after a little finagling, I managed to get the sides off and get all the wires, well, not all the wires, disconnected. Because I'm afraid to go too deep because there's a lot of tape and the BMS and battery wires are all, they're really nicely run round and taped off and made to go in nice directions. And someone spent a lot of time taping this up really nicely and getting it all, you know, straight and not straight, but, you know, squared away properly. Uh, so these these are these um like the big cells. Look at the size of them. They're like really tall. Uh, if I had a tape measure, I could measure them for you. But uh... da, 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 da. all right. So what's your closest cell size to like one thirty, one twenty, hundred twenty mil, hundred twenty mil, hundred twenty mil by thirty something, hundred twenty mil by. 30 mil ish something uh, cell size. How many cells are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six eights are 48. There are 48 cells in there, and I've got no idea in what arrangement they are. But there are some numbers round the side here that I will zoom in on, and some of them might make sense to someone, which would be great. And then you could leave a comment, and then we would all get smarter from it. Uh, I can see there, there are wires that come off the battery packs that go into this uh, battery management board underneath. And then there's power comes out of here, and I had the multimeter. And the power off that board is, let me see if I can do this with one hand. From there is nine point, well, nine volts. There's nine volts coming off of that which then goes into the board on the top. And I can see on there, there are two large soldered on 40 amp fuses. That's definitely some sort of transformer. There's a small transformer, we've got banks of capacitors and giant heat sinks on, uh, I don't know, they look like, well to me, they look like giant MOSFETs. Wait a minute, is there a chance I can zoom in a number and then somebody could look that up? No, I, yeah, I can, with my old eyes, I cannot even see. But yeah, everything's covered in the, that rubber stuff, the like silicon that stops it from vibrating and whatnot. There are, that's how everything, it appears to have a conformal coating over it. But one thing I have noticed is all of these, everything's got a sticker on it, the warning. This label will turn red when get wet. No warranty if product water, oh, no warranty if product got water in. And they are on everything. This one, this one, eh, the EC connection, that's the plug side. Oh, word of note about the plug side. There is no earth connection. All the earths are joined together, but they have omitted the earth connection to anything else. I mean, it's, it's here. There's the AC inside. AC in runs on the board, connects the board, connects to here, and then doesn't go anywhere else. So I presume that that's supposed to have a ground connection to the other rest of the board and actually ground everything together, which is something that I, ca I can do. I could do that. I could add that in, put in a ground connection, and finish the job there and have it all ground tied, and then all the grounds are ground. As I say, the wobbly connectors, spade connectors. I'm going to take all of them off one at a time and give them a bit of a squash and put them all back on so they're nice and tight going back on. Uh, right, so that was the EC outside, two fans, a board for the plugs. That's the AC and DC inside, which just had the Anderson connectors and the IEC socket and two fans. And the front panel board, which was this one, I have taken off and it's just got a big circuit board for the controls for the front for all the USB type stuff. Again, the sticker with the, you know, warranty void if wet. That's just uh, DC side. No, well, it's all DC on this side. It's uh, USB and the DC outputs and a light and obviously the screen. And the back panel, the back panel's got a little board of its own. Even though there's nothing plug wise on the board, it's got this other little ancillary board which has got a whole lot of uh, hell, ubiquitous black um, three-legged chips on it 
And two little teeny tiny fans. Look at them. Two little teeny tiny fans. Giant heat sink. More toroidal things. Uh, there's definitely there's ones that say PV, so I'm guessing that's uh, for solar. But it has the input from the wait. Where's those two? Those two go over to the other side. They connect. That's the the twelve volt leads. Oh, I'm going to set this down. Yeah. These are the two leads that go over to the twelve volt cigarette lighter socket. So twelve volts must come out of there. And that one's got as marked as. That one's not marked. That one says 2AC, that one says PV, positive and negative, so there must be solar connection there, so I don't know if this is part of the solar controller, and there's another one that says ground and 24 volts, 24 volt, 24 volt to DC main, oh actually it technically says to DC main, I don't know if that's a threat, where is it, where is it, there, that one, to DC main, that one's 2AC, and again, the warning label that if it gets wet, you've voided your warranty. But, as I say, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the innards there. Everything's well built, everything's made of ABS polycarbonate. All the bits were, well, they were attached. And it did work before I took it apart. So now my challenge, of course, is to put it back together, see if I can work out where all the wires and plugs came from, and if it'll run. And then we'll do some power testing. Well... It's uh, it's all plugged back in. Uh, I haven't cable tied in it in place yet, but go on, let's power it up. Nope. Okay, what have I not plugged in? What have I not plugged in? Ah, uh, uh, I've not plugged in the fucking board. Oh, I would do it, idiot. Definitely needs to be more plugged in. Okay, now it's plugged in. Hey, science. There's clicking. There's also a blue flashing LED. Has this got like, is, is, is there like a Bluetooth thing in this? Has that got, let me just do a quick uh, Bluetooth search. Go on then, pair a new device. Nope. Nope. I wonder what it is then. It's got a Bluetooth, oh, it's got a blue flashing LED. And it's not Bluetooth. Wonder what it is. Hold on, let me, let me bring you, bring you around for a look. So there's a little teeny tiny board. No, well, not teeny tiny, but you know what I mean. A small board, right. See this, this board here, this bit here with the blue flashing twinkly LED on it. I wonder why it's got a blue LED. wonder what it represents. Right, well, anyway, it's still, well, it mostly works. It appears to work. I've not actually clicked it down into space yet. There it goes. Oh, yeah. You already in? That's it, it's already in, right? So it's now it's a catch. I've just not put the lid on yet. What we should do then is turn it around, plug a load in, and then get the thermal imager and poke it into its insides and see what goes on in there. So let me do. turn you around. Turn it, turn it, turn it like that. Right, there's our plugs. Uh, where's my hideous uh, load. So for a load, I have gone ahead and used a, and well it'll be a purely resistive load, this is just a, like a one kilowatt heater element attached to a wire, uh, attached to a 13 amp plug. And what I'm going to do is dangle it. I'm going to dangle it on the floor, right there. My head out of the way. Heat shield. Gonna lie it right there. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in. Plug it in there. Now what I'm gonna do is stop my wires dangling over the top of my load. 
So that's very dangerous. Right, that's in. That's on. Let's turn it on. Go. Okay. Uh, bring you around. So, the current output I see it's a 1 kilowatt element. It might not be 1 kilowatt. It might just be, well, 700 watts. We'll call 700 because there's output and 600 hours remaining. Two hours. There is the hot glowing element down there. Alright, so we'll let it just make noises. None of the fans are on yet. Granted, it is only a 600 watt load. It smells hot in here. Let's get out our trusty 2G thermometer. There's my fingerprint. There it is. Yeah, I'm now recording again. Right. Hot element. Very hot. Smashing. Let's have a peer inside. I'm I'm going to take that uh, 100 odd something temperature reading with a grain of salt. Due to the fact that nothing's black in here. Does that make sense? Although saying that, they could be... I'm not even sure what this is. Or like a diode. So those two bits there, you can see, I'm going to poke my finger in. That, those, those two bits there, that's the terminals of the battery, and they are not hot. But that bit there is 105 degrees. It looks like a diode. If I get one side, you can see the yeah, it's reflection. So the diode, which is, or is a resistor, 33R0. It's hot. It's very hot. It's very hot. It's, and its friends are also very hot. Has it got a, or a match on the other side? It's very hot. These things aren't hot. I'm also glad they're not live. But the batteries are able to peer into the depths of thermal imaging. Nothing else, blazingly. These little uh, MOSFETs on this side, I'm going to presume they're MOSFETs, are getting warm. Not hot, hot, just warm. And again, I uh, don't know if you can see on the video, but each of these heat sinks has got a thermistor attached to it. Our transformers uh, again getting warm, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Again, we are only pulling six hundred watts. It's not, not anything unusual. I mean, apart from those resistors getting really hot, I don't know if they're supposed to. You would have thought not. The ones on this side aren't particularly warm. Right, what is that? What is? What is... let's turn the side on. There's... There's... In there's warm. Something in there. Did I, I never unplugged those fans. I never unplugged those fans. Wait, there's another. I've just realised that on the back of that uh, board, the one that goes on the back panel. It's also got a blue LED on it that you can't see. It's flashing to no one, to nowhere. Uh, yeah, right. Well, that didn't get it very hot. I mean, obviously, stand back, it looks hotter than it is, but the hottest bits are those resistors. 107 degrees. Let me try. I'm going to do a picture in picture now. Oh, that's picture by picture. Do me a mix. Actually, though, this, this makes sense now. Kind of. Wait, why is it the... Oh, I need to change the overlay. Wait. The mix is... The mix is off. Because obviously... Right, where's the hot spot? I need to move it over, a, over or I could stand back a bit. I don't make any sense, that's worse. Right, so there wasn't anything overly exciting here with the thermal imaging. I mean, it was 
none of the hot bits got particularly hot hot. Apart from those resistors, I presume they're resistors. They must be, they've got R's, they must be resistors. I don't know why they're so hot. But nothing else got excitingly hot. Right, we've now drowned, dr drowned? drained the battery 5%. So I'm going to plug it in and see if it actually, not if it charges, but if it does the full current on the thing or if it's just going to do a little quick uh, charge. Because you obviously it's at the top where it's probably not going to go at full power because the batteries are almost charged. What have we got input? 500. Yeah, so it's just going to do the thing now where it's just going to top off the batteries. Yeah, I should bring you around and show you that. So we've got 643 at the wall. 550 on the display. And obviously it's on the last. 5% of topping off the batteries, which is kind of, you know what I want, I want it just to be doing, you know, a nice gentle finishing charge. Although it does say it's going to take 14 hours to do the last 5%, which I'm not sure I believe it. No, not 14 hours, it's going to take 13 minutes, sorry, I didn't even know the, the display changes between minutes and hours, you have to pay attention. In 12 minutes, it'll be fully charged. And then once it's fully charged, I'm going to plug the, uh, I'm going to plug the, how am I going to plug, I mean plug an extension in kind of defeats the purpose of, I'm going to work out how to plug in the watt meter into the outlet and then plug in my load and then leave it and see how many kilowatt hours it does and then we'll come back once I've done that. So while I was charging and I was cable tying, I lent on uh, these, uh, and they're they're hot. These are not red hot, and obviously we can't see because it's a shiny metal surface, so we just see a reflection of everything else. We can't see it properly, but we can get a kind of a look down the side this time. And the uh, MOSFETs. I'm just going to call them MOSFETs because I don't know, really know what they are, but I think they're MOSFETs. They're they're hot. This side's still not hot. Those little resistors are still hot. But the, uh, the heat sinks are heating up. Fan still hasn't come on. I'm pretty sure I plugged all the fans back in. Yeah, all the fans are still plugged in. So I don't know what temperature... Like, it's, it's not too hot to touch. Still just touch. But it is warm. So... And that side wasn't warm before. Those two. I don't know if that's obviously taking the AC in and making it a DC for the uh, charging the batteries. These ones are just probably I would go with ambient and not actually doing anything. Yeah, they're not really doing anything at all. Okay, just a bit of extra information. Okay, the power meter is reset. Wait, let me move you back a bit. This will make more sense if you're back a bit. I managed to find my current sensing plug thing that allows us to extend this out a little bit. Just need to... Oh man, that is a ropey fit at best. But let's, let's, let's just go with it. Let's, let's just do the, do the thing. Alright, we'll plug that in there. Where's our load gone? Here's our load. Oh, this is, this is fine. This is fine. This is totally... Totally safe. This doesn't feel dangerous or dodgy in any way, shape or form. And if we turn on the AC, go. That lights up. Starts counting. Right, we're doing 600 odd watts. We are timing. It's timing the kilowatt hours. I've got 231.5 and 50 hertz output. 2.8 amps. 651 watts, give or take. So that's going to take three hours to flatten the battery. Down to nothing. So in three hours, I shall return to hopefully this is turned off and this will be sitting with the last count of the thing. And 
in the interests of safety, I'm going to put one of these fire extinguisher balls right there. So should it go on fire, it'll explode the ball and put the fire out. That's the theory anyway. Hopefully we don't have to test this. I'll be back in two, two hours. I presume it went from like three hours and it counts down to, it doesn't have points, it just has two, so we've got two hours. Come back in three hours. Okay, with our load test completed, uh, load test, let me go back to, we achieved a output of 1.672 kilowatt hours, which is close to the claimed 1,994 or something like that, just under 2,000 kilowatt hours, and it outputted like 300, no, 270 shy watt hours of the 300, of the 2,000, 10%. Well, we'll give them a 10% margin. That's not too bad. So over the weekend, uh, Paul and I, we took this down to the warehouse when we were working on his Land Cruiser and we had Paul's ARB portable compressor fridge plugged into the 12 volt socket and it was able to power that fine. But during the night, we just left it all plugged in and turned on. And obviously this must have this eco thing where at some point, where it doesn't detect any output on the, you know, uh, well, so far we've only tested the 12 volt, but if it doesn't detect any output, it turns off. I don't know after how many hours. I didn't see a mention of it in the instruction manual about uh, it turning off, and there's, well, there's certainly no option to turn this uh, eco mode off. So it's kind of like the original, or the first generations of the, I can't remember if it was Blue Eti or Anchor power supplies, where they had the eco function built in, and there was no way to turn it off. And then in the later generations, they added in a switch or you press and held a button. But on this one, there isn't that thing. So after a few hours of inactivity, it will turn off, unfortunately. Now, other than the turning off bit, that's the only thing I don't like about it. I mean, it's, uh, as we've seen, the insides are made of. It's ABS polycarbonate and it's nice, thick, heavy, sturdy. Oh, you could stand or sit in this, not a problem. You could use this as a step. It's, it's nice. It's... It, but apart from the turn off, that's that thing. Uh, it's powered as much as I've needed to power when we're playing down the workshop. Uh, the only thing I was going to play with while we're in here was, can I get it to weld? That'll be a nice little test. Enough space to push this back and get the old welder, wheel welder set up and we'll see if I'll run a bead. Let's do that. Sadly, I've now just realised that all of my actual welding masks are down at the warehouse uh, we were playing uh, the other day. So if this does any sort of bead whatsoever, it'll be a pure miracle because I can't see a thing. Anyway, there's the welder that we're going to plug in. Let me uh, put this on the floor. I have a much better idea. And you can be ground and the power wire. It's this one. It's turned itself off. So that was about 10 minutes where I hadn't faffed about and where are the plugs other than this end? Where are this end? Alright, AC's on. Where's the flap? Right, welder's plugged in. Where's the on button? The welder has turned on. Set to 90 amps, seems seems reasonable. Alright, so currently my welder is drawing 40 watts, doing not a lot. So I assume I can shut my eyes and barely weld. I mean, most of my welds will have been done with their eyes shut anyway, so it won't matter. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, mind your eyes, I'm just going to spark up and see what arms. Hey! Right, can I weld with my shot? No, wait. Ugh. I found a welding mask. I can do this. I just need to lean. I think what I need is more current. More current, let's give her more power. 120 amps, that sounds much better. Right. 
Can I get my rod back, please? Thank you. Not being able to hit a C doesn't help. Right, here we go, once again, for the third time. Okay, aside from my bad welding, it's doing it. I can't tell if it's me or not, if my welder turning on and off. Let's give it more current. All right, that's like at the top end of these row. bad boys. Can anybody see the screen? All right, can you? Oh, you can see the screen from there, can you? I mean, it appears to be doing it quite happily, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so, this one will weld as well. This one will weld as well. That's the welder I don't like, uh, but hey, we're, we're here. Woo. <coughs> That's a bit smoky in here now. Right, final thoughts. Do I like it? Uh, I like the construction. I like that it's made of nice, sturdy plastic, aluminium handles. I like the kind of, the multiple clamshell design, uh, which makes it relatively easy take apart. I like that it's using the big, the larger cells, not just the usual 18650, it's actually using the bigger LFB batteries and everything's relatively well put together inside. Granted, apart from the spade terminals, which could have done with just been a little bit, I mean they worked, but I just, I like my spade terminals to not jiggle, so a little bit of crimping, put all them back together. Uh, I don't like the not having a switch for eco mode. Uh, I like being able to turn it on and off and it just stay on the whole time, no matter whether you're using it or not, just stay on and do your things. But other than that, it's got plenty of connections, USB and power and all the... Oh, I do like the uh, 12 volt, 25 amp, the big heavy duty. I know some of the other power stations are starting to do them as well, but... And honestly, power station manufacturers, I would just stop including these ones entirely. I, I, I don't know what they're for. I don't think I've ever seen anything have a connection for any of these bullet connectors you, you could save money and just leave them out and just leave like an X an XE 60 or something which is a lot more common for connecting things and do it that way uh, when I was charging it the fans did run, I did take a brief uh, thermographic shot it did actually have the fans on, they were nice and quiet and it didn't get overly hot so that's about that for the a uh, 2000 watt power bank any comments, questions, anything else, leave them down below and I will try my very best handsome. And as always, thanks for watching.